uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you for introducing me. So, uh, yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit today about the free and how it works with the Big Music Archive. Uh, it's an open source project, uh, River, uh, and, you know, we're trying to really get some mental uh, learning uh, because we love to uh, for our other people to kind of make some fun. Millions pretty quickly. 
And you know, you, you kind of might think, well, maybe you just don't need some of, uh, some of these tags. Uh, and that's fair. There's definitely, I think, an abuse of tags. However, to go for like a concrete example of like at least why some of these are important, um, if we're monitoring a you know back end that runs out of two regions, uh, <coughs> and I realize that both of these regions are being ignored. So my bad. So say you are north in the west, uh, and you know you basically got the status quo metric, but you're not monitoring my SQL rates yet just yet, or if the potentially is another substance you're not monitoring. The mic is not working. Uh, 
And now I want us to look about like why we might be interested in the fruit, um, how it plays with uh, Prometheus and Grandma. So, you know, um, as I mentioned, Prometheus uh, is an absolutely fantastic solution which you should definitely get started using if you're, uh, you're just, uh, just beginning to add modern. Um, and then, and pretty much, you know, if you never really see a single Prometheus, there's no real point to, to really uh, basically set up the long term storage TCP. But what to do, um, or if you want to keep metrics, no, I use a lot of this, what is limited by the local extension of the Prometheus systems. Uh, then, you know, we have an open you know, source, uh, we we'll share this solution with Pub to have more and more people. Uh, like basically use the country back, uh, we would love to not have to you know, meet them as well again um, <clears throat> the next time we go to work with another company. Um, and, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> basically pretty nice, easy to get started. Uh, we've tried to make it both scale out but also scale in in terms of how you run it. Like it's, it, it is a bunch of microservices, but uh, we do run a lot of these in embedded mode. So you can see in the NFT itself, you know, it has a time series database, um, an invariant index, uh, and it uses, uh, it even embeds the conception key binary uh, in, in the same binary uh, when you run the, the database cluster. <laughs> you can actually run conception key as a dedicated uh, cluster in the cluster as well. Uh, <clears throat> and conception key is used for cluster membership, routing, uh, metric rule, propagation, stuff like that. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> Basically, you know, the high level architecture, I wanted to be a little bit deep into like NFTN3D uh, in, in itself. So it's kind of like an LSM, long structure registry uh, <coughs> design. Uh, however, we've opted, you know, for cost efficiency to keep the actions very, very low. Uh, so basically, no data and time to use Windows will ever get back together. Potentially, index uh, low as well, but we, we really try hard to make sure that. The disk uh, is not constantly rewriting itself, the CPU is not being spent with actions, and memory is not kind of ballooned in an unsteady stage of actions. Uh, and we also do all the data cycle up front as it's stated in the aggregators. Uh, so we're not you know, pulling a whole bunch of raw data and down sampling it um, after the is over. Uh, you know, so I wanted to dig you know, in a little bit to basically how we look up these time series on this. Uh, so, you know, when a re query comes in, once we resolve the metrics that we actually need to, to read and serve it, we basically, for each one of these time windows going back, you can see it minus three, minus four hours, minus four point six, all the way back um, across an H1 sort of a point of time window. We can correlate to the process replicas. Uh, but basically, when we're on a single node and we're going through a time window block, uh, say between 2 and 4 p.m., we basically first check a load filter, which is a map uh, for fast lookups, to determine if we need to look up. Uh, we basically use a search for disk for um, a given time window for a given metric. And this is good because uh, sometimes, you know, a uh, very tight, sparse time series will cause a ton of lookups. <coughs> So, uh, you know, we can figure the blue filter to get about a 1% false positive range. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you know, this data structure uh, is a bit big set. Uh, you basically, the API is you can give it a, a reply array or a, a basically a string and say, I want to add this to the set. Uh, and then when you configure, you configure basically uh, M, uh, M and N. <clears throat> And, and uh, you can basically input numbers though, they will input numbers for your N and K. And K is the number of hashes, basically the hash that I, hash that uh, string, uh, and place ones in appropriate places uh, across the set. And then basically you can call back in that uh, loop filter and say, okay, for a given string, does this exist there? And I'm not going to cover it in that in much more detail, but because we have other stuff but it's, it's a probabilistic set of representations, actually. And we can figure out when filters basically give about a 1% false positive match rate. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about like, how, how we actually find that metric on the, in the time window block. So for a 2 to 4 p.m. window, uh, we basically look at that uh, 
uh, then filter. And if it says, yes, uh, this metric might have data for two to four million block, then we go to the summary file, which is also in that. <coughs> and we do a binary search to find the nearest uh, index entry. And so you can imagine that if we're looking for, uh, for the metric cat, and the current value is dark, uh, we're going to do a binary search to start. So the current value of the binary search is dark, we're going to start dark. Let me go left, this can is less than that. Then the current value is fine. <coughs> uh, so now that's before the current entry uh, and the cap that we're looking for. And then we're going to basically say, okay, that was the closest one we found. Now we're going to start literally scanning. Um, and it is done so that the pages, as they're being <coughs> brought into memory from the MAP, um, that we should try to reduce that to about one or two pages uh, for any country. <clears throat> so in this example, you know, we find one, then we see both, and now we have cap. Uh, now we have the exact uh, data offset we can begin to look up in the data file, and we we'll go get that uh, data and check something before we check the clone. <clears throat> um, and I want to talk a little bit about the entry and learning index. Uh, the learning index is similar to the same, it uses uh, FST segments, uh, which, you know, <coughs> products and it uses uh, to build an efficient press um, and it uses growing new maps to capture the metric values associated to a label value. Um, <clears throat> so if you, and, 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 uh, every time we find you know, a, a label value match, <clears throat> then we can pull up the roaring new map, um, <clears throat> basically decoded by attaching the containers to the new map's memory, and then uh, be able to <clears throat> uh, intersect a lot of these metrics queries and divide the results uh, together. So you can see in this example, like a finite state entry series is a little bit like a try, an optimized try. Uh, so in here, in this example, we'll put the word R and C, and they both essentially match the same value three. So we compress the try uh, back together. Uh, and three, in this case, we basically point to a roaring bit map uh, that matches much of the sets. So, you know, for every term combination, um, <coughs> in the form of, say, service in this food, we basically need to store a list of metric IDs, images that match. Um, this is the first uh, And if we have a query that says service is food, endpoint is bar, client version is free, you know, we are uh, basically, to, to resolve that query, uh, we need to intersect the different sets where service is food, endpoint is bar, client version is free. And you can imagine where if you have a red text here, say, like, endpoint equals star, then we first need to expand and match all the, all the actual uh, label values and match bar as well. And that's what the MST does. Um, <clears throat> so once we've found all the concrete based uh, label values that do match this, then we need to intersect uh, the more bit maps associated with all of them together. Um, we calculate uh, one set or all three of them. Um, <clears throat> and then the device index is working into time window slices as well so that we can just drop the mutable uh, indexes uh, <clears throat> when, when the data is no longer uh, actually needs to be pulled back <clears throat> uh, because it's out of attention. Uh, we have to or the result between the time window uh, index indices. And that's, that's great because it means that you know, using something like Elastic Storage or similar, uh, you basically have a whole bunch of deletes um, to basically get, to get rid of data that's outside of your TTL. <clears throat> Uh, or you have to do like index rotations yourself as well. Uh, <coughs> which is kind of similar to the problem that we're doing here with this whole match um, by the database itself in this, in this example. Um, so, you know, diving a little bit more into more of the maps, um, essentially they're just a more uh, <coughs> efficient bitmap. So, you know, more bitmaps can represent up to two in the end. Uh, space uh, and most common ones are represented in 32 or 2 to the 64. Um, <clears throat> for every 2 to the 16 space, uh, you may use a different container depending on the, the cardinality basically in that range of integers that it's trying to represent. So, you know, for a really dense big map, it'll probably choose it. Uh, for a really dense key range in 2 to the 16, it'll probably use a big map. Uh, I'll use that kilobytes of memory. For us, the ones that have less values, uh, we'll probably start with the array and then swap it out to do that. Uh, and then the relevant component is great for you know, long, contiguous 
those kinds of uh, kinds of countries like you know, you have DC, you can have Gaza attack, literally every country in there is like one or the other. Um, it's the one that's concerning the third day of this situation. So, you know, I'm not actually going to jump into this, uh, <coughs> but basically, you can read the word I'm writing, that's a little. Uh, it's kind of powerful, but also kind of easy to use, actually. Uh, you know, we, we basically allow you to run on Kubernetes uh, with a Kubernetes operator. Um, it requires just two roles to run, N3B and N3 coordinator. So you're not running like a compactor, you're not running, you know, uh, query nodes next to, to everything, and uh, you're not running a whole bunch of other roles. Because the void that you can do for these analytics. But you can also deploy them separately if you have a nice solution. So, um, you know, who here is using graphics there? Okay. Um, if, you, if you're using Graphite, uh, you might have a, you know, something that looks like this. Um, you can, uh, as of like this last week, uh, you can actually use Graphite with the free now. Um, and basically, so all you can do is hang Graphite with the free now, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Because uh, a lot of people still have pretty old, um, and, and us ourselves have a lot of metrics, uh, so the company for Graphite, but not for great people. Um, <coughs> And, you know, I was going to talk about the career service, but I probably don't have enough time to do that. Um, who wants me to run a demo? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, great. Um, if anyone would like to hold my microphone, uh, that would be really, really good. Thanks. Thanks to the other proposed. 